speak. I just want to, just a, a word or two from each of you. Yes, what, what uh, I want for my client is the dirt. That means the dirt and misconduct that was uh, perpetrated on him by law enforcement, and discovery obviously is one way to get that. What you heard today, though, from prosecution with Judge Amplifying is that they want to protect all of their informants, the multiplicity of law enforcement and agents who are undercover. They want to protect the politicians. They, they uh, you know, ultimately want to gag us wherein they have provided to public and media the most damaging part of the case from their perspective, and they seek to strangle us under what they call the banner of expediency. We won't give you any discovery unless you sign it. And the judge says, well, yeah, you don't want to co you know, protract this, and we don't. But I, I'm no uh, friend of undercover law enforcement. I'm no uh, friend of corrupt politicians. And if that is what they're really seeking to suppress, I'm on the opposite side. I've indicated I'm not going to sign anything. Thank you, Tony. And uh, it's, hard, it's hard to follow, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought today, in its own way, was helpful because we want the discovery right away. The government has filed a 137-page affidavit. We question each word in that affidavit. And we want to get discovery. And these, these defendants with these lawyers are entitled to that. So I thought it was helpful. It seems like we're moving to finding out what's behind the curtain from the government and all of that. And I appreciate that. And Judge Breyer is moving the case as long as he should. He's going to move it quickly. He wants to do things. And I think all of that is good for all the defendants. So it looks like it's on a, a timetable, a good timetable? Yes, I think so. And, uh, you know, we want to see what the government really has. I appreciate that the press covers appropriately what the government says at the beginning of a case. It almost always turns out, and it'll turn out in this, this case. So if there's no protective order, that means that the press, the media, can get access to it, You right? would get it all if there wasn't a protective order, but I think the judge is moving towards a protective order, at least for now, okay. and uh, it'll work out okay. Do you know if other politicians were caught on wiretaps or in this discovery? Like, or interviewed, rather. Right? I, I have no comment on that question. So, so you, don't have the, you don't share the same concerns that Tony has? Well, he's a great lawyer. Tony, I've known him better all casually for 40 years. This guy, and he, he meets my standard of a great criminal lawyer. He goes into court. When he comes out, he has won a large percentage of his cases. So he's a great lawyer. And so I, I'm, I'm pleased to be with him, although this case needs to be severed. And that's one of our priorities. I don't want to go into that on the steps of the courthouse, but these are groups of people who don't even know each other, charged with different things. The prejudice is profound, and it'll be our job to overcome that prejudice, and we hope to do it. i got to go back Okay, thanks, Jim. Okay. So, Appreciate it. Garrett, what do you want? Garrett, so basically you had the main argument today uh, on the protective order issue. Yeah, we were trying to persuade the court under Rule 16, which governs discovery, Protective orders are discretionary, they're not mandatory, and usually, in, in most, the, the application notes and everything talk about a protective order when witnesses need to be protected, when national security interests are involved, safety of witnesses primarily. Here we're dealing with, we're not dealing with really any civilian witnesses, we're dealing with a bunch of undercover agents who basically went around a reverse thing, setting everybody up. And so there really isn't any witness, I think. There's no witness safety or danger to the community in which we believe a protective order is necessary. However, given the number of people here, 29 defendants, and this overarching massive case which the government has put together, they're saying they don't have time to sort things out. So the only way we can turn it over is we're going to turn it over under this cloak of secrecy where nobody can talk about anything if you want to get it. And we're just saying that that's overreaching. That That isn't really required, but then the converse is, well, then you're going to have to wait forever before you get it. So, and, and then, you know, I don't think we, we agreed, but the judge 
indicated what he wanted to see happen and what was going to happen. He wants the protective order put in place. He wants everybody to get everything. And so to, you know, in the name of expediency, the protective order is what's going to happen. Which means? Which means, all, well, I don't know what, what it means. It means we got 29 different lawyers in here. Everybody's got a different point of view. The lawyers are going to get together and try to work, you know, in the spirit of what the judge wants to see. But, you know, everybody's different. And so, you know, I don't know how many we're going to deliver or how many is going to be on one side and there's going to be different groups. But we're going to make the well, effort. Does that mean lawyer taps not included? Or does that mean those well, No, right are, now, right now, right now, right now, right now the protective order covers every bit of single evidence in the case. Everything falls under a protective order. And what we're basically saying is that, look, if we agree there may be some things that require a protective order, but not everything, you know? So, and, and, and but I, I think what they're saying is it'll take too long to sort out what is covered and what is not covered. So what the judge is saying, look, it, take it, you guys, under a protective order and then come back to me and tell me what should be unprotected, which, you know, I don't think it's the right way to start. But, you know, but at least this, is, this is an unusual case. Yeah. I mean, there are way too many people charged. It's just, it's, nobody can handle, I mean, the judge, everybody's acknowledging everybody's not going to be together for trial. It, this is just, a wheel. Uh, yeah, it's totally, it's a nightmare. When will you start reviewing the um, yes. discovery materials? So when will you actually start looking at the discovery materials? Well, I don't know. We're supposed to meet with them on Monday. Okay. And, then that, that, and then we see how far we get. And then if we get an agreement, Yes. We go with the agreement to the Most judge, and we don't. Yes, you know, we go to the judge to saying, "Well, we got a partial the, agreement. I got a full agreement. We may have a group saying we don't agree at all. We have and some people that say we agree with it, and right some people will say we got to split. We got to split. You know, what was we want to do. Are you in open court? Okay. No, no, no. Monday is just a meeting so, among the lawyers. Okay. But how are the lawyers going to decide who's going to be tried together or not? Yeah. That judge is, that's, Absolutely. he's going to talk about that I'm 90 days from now. Well, July 24th is the July 24th is where the judge thinks everything is going to get sorted mm -hmm. out. He, he hopes it will get sorted out. That the order chief mm -hmm. They stuffed the some money in his the pocket that he didn't want. He didn't agree. I have access to nothing now. I have access to exactly what you have access to. Right. Right now, it's nothing. If the protective order goes to your effect, then the public will not have access to all these But you will. Yeah. How about your clients? Well, there's there's problems about clients that are in custody, my clients in custody, clients that are out of custody, and there seems to be two different ways, but it's going to be heavily regulated, and, 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 and I don't know, it, it's pretty cumbersome. And, and you know, it's crazy, we could spend an hour talking about what it could be, and I don't think it, it really makes sense until we actually get closer to having Mm -hmm. something worked out, okay. which right now everybody's mm -hmm. going to try to Hopefully do. You can okay. Thanks, Garrick. I you guess appreciate it. Uh, uh, Garrick, please. Thank you. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's what we hope for. No.